pride and humility and humbleness. You know, so many times I think we we let pride get in our way. How many of you have ever done that before? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's really funny because, you know, you cannot ever say, right? You cannot say, well, I'm a humble person. <laughs> right? Because what are you doing when you're telling yourself, telling other people that you're humble? Well, you be prideful about that, right? So, so I really believe that um, there is a fine, fine line between pride and humility. And so we're going to talk about that today. Um, I like some of these things that I found on the internet. It says, proud people are full of themselves. Amen. Humble people are full of God. Again, that word enthusiasm, that word enthusiasm is two Greek words and it basically means God within us. And you know, in order for us to have the, full, the fullness of God living within us, it's going to take humility. And even like in uh, AA um, and, and uh, any 12-step type of program, we, we, we understand the first step is that we have to realize that we, as human beings, are powerless over whatever sin nature that tends to control us. And so in order for us to get any better, to get past the first step, is that we have to actually humble ourselves. And maybe I think that's one of the reasons why um, baptism is such an uh, issue with people because they have to actually say, I am a sinner and that I need God and I have to humble myself before an almighty God and do what he tells me to do, go get wet. I mean, nobody wants to get wet. I know the, uh, last, last Sunday we had, had somebody, because I was having problems with the baptistry, right? It, um, somebody had to get wet, and he already did baptize, right? But, but you know, I thought that was humility right there, it expressed humility when he realized the only way he was going get to get rid of that water in that baptistry was to actually climb in that water. I'm not trying to build you up or give you any pride issues here. <laughs> but proud people are just full of themselves. And I think if you try to find out if you are prideful, uh, just examine how you speak to people. If there's a lot of words that say I, then it's probably, there's something to do with ego in there. In fact, did you know that the word ego, the origin is, from the Greek word, the pronoun, I. That's where it comes from. And so, you know, we, we tend to uh, say things like, you know, if you don't watch out, you won't be able to fit to that door because your head's too big. We have a big head. Or our nose is, in, in Hawaii, they call it the high maka maka, which is your nose is up in the your nose is always up there. What happens if you have your nose up in the air, you know, what's going to happen? You're going to fall. You're going to slip and you're going to fall because you think you're so almighty. And when you think you're great, guess what? You're blinded to this thing called pride. And so let's look at the next one. Pride is about my glory. Look at what I have done. But humility is about God's glory. And that's why it's so important that we, when we accomplish something or do something for somebody, that we constantly give God the glory. Because really, would we be doing those things if God didn't tell us that we should be serving other people? That's true. So pride Versus humility. There's two scripture passages here. Pride goes before the destruction. A haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder 
with the proud. Whoever hates life giving correction will be at home among the wise. Those who disregard discipline despises themselves. <laughs> but the one who hates correction gains understanding. And you know, there's so many times when we feel like we don't want to hear it from the other person. We don't want people telling you what to do, right? How many of you, don't raise your hand, how many of you get that feeling, don't tell me what to do. I know what I'm doing, right? And what is that? I mean, if you look at it, the, the, the attitude is, you know, don't tell me what to do, man, I know what I'm doing, right? But wisdom's instruction is to what? Fear the Lord. And humility comes before honor. Now, we'll go back to Isaiah. In fact, this goes even before Isaiah, before even the earth was created, right? How have you fallen from heaven? Some translations will say Lucifer. But he was given the name Morning Star. Now, if you really think about it, God gave Lucifer a name which was a name to be honored. But, but be careful when people praise you. Because, you know, he says, well, look at me. I'm the morning star. He says, you have fallen from the heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once lay low the nation. You, you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens, and I will raise my throne above the stars of God, and I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly. You, you get that? I will, I, I will get to that throne of God, and you know, God's going to be knocked off that throne, and I will sit enthroned on the mount of the assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zephyr. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to the realm of the dead, into the depths of the pit. You see, pride is not a new issue here. Pride is something that started way at the beginning. And everybody, everybody is susceptible to this pride issue, no matter who you are. And we have to realize that there's a fine line. And if we don't keep ourselves in check, it's easy to fall into a pride issue. In Galatians 6, it says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But well, watch yourselves or you may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, what happens? They deceive themselves. You know, it's so easy to go and try to fix other people's problems and be blinded to the sin and of, of pride that you have within yourself. And, you know, it's kind of uh, interesting that other people can see it when you're prideful. And I think that is one of the reasons why it's so important to ha have fellowship. It's because if you're home alone, you know, oh, I don't need other people, which is a pride issue. Get that? It's a pride issue. I don't need other people. I can do it by myself. That's a pride issue. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important that we get into fellowship because you know what? When we are prideful, people will call you out. People will say, you know what? You better watch it because you're trying to 
take the log out of somebody's eye, right? I mean, to take the speck out of somebody's eye when you have a log in your own eye. It's a pride issue. Each one should test their own actions, and then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to somebody else. How many of you have done that before? Don't raise your hand. How many of you have compared yourself? Well, I am better than so and so. At least I don't, right? Try to compare yourself to Jesus. Where do you line up now? See? Pride, humility. It's so easy when you don't walk that fine line and understand that this whole issue of pride and humility has been, the example has been set by Jesus Christ, right? Do, a, do nothing out of selfishness or vain conceit, but in humility consider one another as being more important than me. You know, I started memorizing that scripture verse in college. And when I do counseling, I, 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 I say to each other, okay, whenever you run into a problem, ask yourself this question. Why are we having this problem? And you know what? Most of the time it's because of this issue of pride. I want my way. I don't want to do how you want to do it. I want to do it my way. And a lot of times, you know, the, the, the big things that, that anger people, a lot of times they get angry and they blow up and they have this big argument. And you know what? They forgot what they were fighting about. <coughs> Been there? Done that? And it's because a lot of the times when we fight, we're fighting with things that really don't matter at all. Now I remember in marriage counseling, they, they tell us, you know, well, sometimes men like the toilet paper to go over the top and women like to go under, I don't know, it's because maybe they get pulled more or something, I don't know, but, uh, or toothpaste, you know. Uh, I, I know some people like to orderly roll that thing from the bottom of the toothpaste, and some people just like to squeeze it. So what? Why make a big issue out of that? <laughs> Pride, I want it my way. There's a couple of singers, famous singers, right? They sing that song. With, what is it? Anybody know? I did it my way. My way. Going through life, and you know what? I did it my way. I want. I don't want my song to be I did it my way. I want to say I did it. God's way. That in my life, Lord, be glorified. In our church, Lord, be glorified. And it's again, we have to humble ourselves and realize that we are not going to make it our own. There's no way that we can, can, can have the ability to, to make it in this world on our own. We are weak. Yes. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And that's the key is through Christ. We need to give God the glory. How many of you like to read the Proverbs? In fact, I know there's how many chapters in Proverbs? 31. And most months are 31. 31. So, you know, I've been told if you read a chapter a day, you'll be a wiser person. And when you get to the 31st verse, start over again, because you know what? You can say, oh, I'm wise, because I read all 31 chapters. You know, it, isn't, it, isn't it that way? Is that we think we can arrive at being humble. But, you know, scriptures are full of keep yourself in check, lest you fall. A wise son Heeds his father's instruction. But a mocker does not respond to rebuke. And from the fruit of their lips, people enjoy good things. But the unfaithful have an appetite for violence. 
and those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. How many of you ever been told by your parents, think before you speak? Mm. Huh? How many of you didn't listen to that advice? <laughs> you know, we all experience that in life, is we think we know better. But you know what? I think that's why our generation is so messed up. It's because kids today think they are so smart that they don't want to hear it from the elderly people. And so there's no respect. You see how respect and humility goes hand in hand? No, the kids are today are, are so prideful is that they think they're better than the people who have a little more wisdom because they've experienced life a little longer. And so they will just kind of disc you and say, you know what, I'm not going to respect you because, you know, you don't respect me, so I don't have to respect you. you ever hear that? Huh? A slugger's appetite is never filled. But the desires of the delightful are fully satisfied. The righteous hate what is false, but the wicked make themselves a stench and bring shame upon themselves. Righteousness guards the person of integrity, but the wickedness overthrows the sinner. One person pretends to be rich and yet has nothing. Another pretends to be poor, yet has great wealth. And again, here's one that I, I, I see being a person that has dealt with people's finances and helped counsel people with finances, you know what, it seems like the rich people drive around, the truly rich people, not the people that appear to be rich now, okay, the people that have money, the reason why they have money is because they know how to not just have this pride issue and say, well, I need the newest car. I mean, you see a lot of poor people, I, I don't know, how it is. I know this town doesn't have that many nice paying jobs, but when I drive up past that high school, I see these high school students with brand new cars. And I know their parents don't, not all of their parents have the kind of money to pay cash for those cars, so they probably go into debt. Why? It's a pride issue, right? It, it's the kid's pride. My mom's and my mom and dad bought me this brand new car, but it's also the parents' pride issue. I take care of my kids. I'm better than the people that make their kids walk to work. Well, what's wrong with walking to, to school or walking to work? You know, there's nobody that's healthy that can't walk everywhere in this town. You realize that? But yet I, be, I have people that, that live just a few blocks down and they want to get a ride. And it's pretty sad. Why? Because I'm too proud. I, I, I don't want to walk. I, I, maybe we need the exercise, right, to walk. How many of you think that you could use a little more exercise? Huh? You don't have to raise your hand. <laughs> that, that, that's just a, a question. <laughs> the righteous hate what is false, but the wicked make themselves a stench and bring shame upon themselves. Righteousness guards the person of integrity, but the wickedness overthrows the sin. One person pretends to be rich and yet has nothing, and the other pretends to be poor and yet has great wealth. And again, I, I, I see people that have struggled and saved little bit by little bit, and then later on they can purchase the things that they really need. But you know what? I also see that truly humble, rich people are giving people. They don't announce it to everybody and say, you know, look what I've done, because what happens? Pride, Pride gets in the way. Look what I've done. See, I, the word I. No, we can say things like, look what the Lord has done. He has blessed me so much. And without the Lord's blessing upon me, I would be nothing. 
really think about it, is would you do the good things that you 